the 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 tell suite in the last time at the AMNO elections, you frankly almost made it. All everybody thought that uh, you would have made it, but uh, our very shrewd Dr. Matia pulls something out of the rabbit, out of the hat, the rabbit out of the hat. Are you prepared for it? And uh, do you think that uh, it may happen again? <laughs> You know, um, Paul Kitty, the former Prime Minister of Australia, was here. And you know he had this unpleasant relations uh, with Mahathir over this issue of recalcitrant comment he made. So he um, then um, spent some time with me. We had uh, you know, tea together, etc. And I, you know, we get good friends. I said, Paul, elections is due. They close on Australia then. He said, it's tough, honestly. In confidence, it's very tough. I don't think I can make it. I said, come on, Paul. You have, you are known to be smart. You know, you have the tricks on sleeve, and uh, you, I'm sure you can because I, I know you. I've seen debate. He's one of the most um, articulate political leaders in Australia. You know what he said to me? I wouldn't say it publicly, but to a friend, you know, I would tell you. I have exhausted all tricks possible. <laughs> and I think in confidence, Naji or Mahabe will say the same. Tell me what they have not done. Sex videos, done. Sulu agent, done. Chinese agent, done. American agent, Jewish agent, done. Terrorists done. And then women done, men done. <laughs> the only thing available is over to the car. <laughs> and I, I dread and Aziza said, don't ever give them ideas. <laughs> else? Bring, bring one, bring two. And then whoever one, I mean, will give an award anything to anybody. Temples, yes. Masjid, yes. Why were you asking? You know? uh, ex army, ex teachers, whatever it takes, they've exhausted all things possible. We tell them what else can they think? So I, I'm of course finally leave it to God. Man. Someone said about, well, yeah, Zul said about politics of principles. You see. I used to quote uh, Gandhi uh, principles. Mahatma Gandhi talks about politics of conscience. Very Islamic and very Hindu, Christian for the matter. Huh? When I say this, they say no, I know I was promoting liberalism and pluralism by equating Islam to Hinduism. Then I was due to be charged in the Sharia court. Just for saying this, for my lecture at the London School of Economics, some years back, by quoting Saint Augustine and um, probably uh, Swami Vivekananda, he said, "How can I Muslim quote Saint Augustine?" Uh, so I might have talked to the religious minister or uh, minister of religious affairs. I said, "Can you get the paper translated in good Bahasa? I don't think you can understand my lecture." <laughs> So I think you ignore its uh, temporary irritations. But the point is, they are exhausted. You know, every day in the media, for the last 15 years, I mean, you don't watch them. I've got, I've got to undergo this, to endure this. And I have all my sympathy to others and the children too. You know, they have to. Every day, without exception, there's something. That's what, now it becomes a standard joke. If you look at the Facebook, how these young guys have this uh, ingenious manner of uh, talking about Anwar's mistake, Anwar's fault. And today is the result of the secondary school in SPM results. If I achieve well, it's an deep credit. If I not well, then Anwar's fault. <laughs> and then there was a show, uh, uh, photograph, uh, a cat was caught stealing 
fish. So the cat was caught and said, did you steal the fish? And the cat raised his hand and all. <laughs> so it's a very, very popular cartoon. But jokes aside, you know, this was happening. It's about all this. They still question that sort of way. But I tell you, faith, conviction, and Gandhi says, politics of conscience. Uh, I am Aziza. We are great friends of Raj Mohan Gandhi, the, great, the grandson, the grandson of Al Mahatma Gandhi, who actually espoused this very strongly what the grandpa has said about politics of conscience. And um, I think it gives an enormous sense of strength. Do you think about that like you have ever considered talking about before? It is a very corrupt, morally decadent establishment. You don't ever assume to be an easy life. But with faith, can you imagine? Yesterday, you were in court. I was not in court, but then it was been a table back in the court to listen to our counsel, the former head of persecution in the Anwar case, now lead counsel in my case. Can you imagine? You know, after the case, I mean, this is that you do so, was head of persecution. We went through every single document, file, medical record against me. And after that, say, oh, no, I have had enough. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Can I now join you and be your defense team? He yeah. <laughs> so, uh, was impressed. He said, no, 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 I think you have to really be a bit more suspicious with this guy. But that's the truth. That's the truth. You know, the last uh, fortnight, suddenly, the father of this um, disciple who actually was uh, alleged in Solomon, and it came up publicly and said, there is a conspiracy involving a key member of Najib's team. We have see these allegations. A public statement saying that a member of the team conspired against Anwar. This is the father of the alleged victim. Although I won the case, but still, in any uh, system, it will warrant an immediate investigation to reopen the case. In our case, Conspiracy of silence. Yeah. <laughs> you know Deepa? You know Bala, the late Bala? Yeah. You know Americ? America? America. Yes, and now in the case of Cecil Abraham. So there are enough uh, cases they have to deal with. But what do we do? People ask me, Anwar, what do we do with Mahade? <coughs> no, he, by the time I take over, inshallah, he will be 87. <laughs> so what do I do with it? Just leave him alone. You know? Just the mere fact they announce it, we take over. I think they have enough to rattle him. Okay. Just leave him alone. But what is the difference? I said I'm not Najib. Okay? Najib wouldn't dare do anything. I would say I will not touch him. Mary's towards none to vote for the people. Okay. <laughs> justice is justice. Retributive justice is not justice. So it must be on issues of law, on the rule of law. But if you ask me as the victim, I forgive you. <laughs> yeah. Unlike Najib, I will make sure the only the transparent tender exercise that his son's company will not automatically get a billions of contract from Petronas. That has to stop. Really. We have a fund that says encourage others to participate. That has to be done. And similarly with all the other exercises, um, per per taxi permits to all the unknown colonies, enough. No. And you want to keep the permit? You drive the taxi. <laughs> Even this you can't change. It's a very small matter. Even this, we challenge him for years. He's not prepared to do anything. You know why? He's not prepared to touch. Not only Mahadev, but even the I'm no youth chief in the division. <coughs> this is grossly unfair. Who are the taxi drivers? X 
I mean, listen there. You look at the taxi drivers, or the poor Chinese guy with the Indian guy. So I think uh, this we have to change. So I thank you again and give us this uh, support. And many of you are investors, and I would welcome and, and, and please. And I've been there, you know, as a finance for eight years. I know what it takes. At least uh, you talk about this populism or just another rhetoric and go on in the old ways. You will not be able to attract investors, many of them. They are smart, they know what to do. But I believe if given a chance, we will do whatever it takes to propel the economy and to make sure that Malaysia become a real, vibrant economy. And proud for every single Malaysian to be proud to be on the call of Malaysia. Without this thing, thank you. 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 Thank I know Hong Kong, Thailand, thank you very much for your support and with your support now and God willing after the elections too.